Evening everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, going back to 1980 tonight uh, for a movie that I've not seen for quite a while. Watched it again last weekend, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd forgotten just how good it actually was. Breaking Glass, uh, starring Hazel O'Connor, Phil Daniels. Basically an expose of the music industry as it was and as it probably still is back in the early 80s. Um, it's a cracking movie. Uh, saw it first at Burton Odeon years ago. Loved it. Bought the soundtrack. Played it to death. Uh, recently bought the soundtrack again on CD. Um, I've had that in the car for quite a while. Um, it starts <clears throat> with Hazel O'Connor's character, uh, Kate, plastering posters and stickers up all over London and on the underground um, for a gig that she's got coming at some rubbish crap little venue um, and while she's doing this she meets uh, Phil Daniels uh, a character called Danny Price um, who's an aspiring manager who decides he wants to take Kate under his wing um, and it basically goes from there um, he helps her to form a band which they call Breaking Glass and it charts their rise to stardom uh, via a lot of misadventures in sort of small pubs, small clubs, up to playing um, a larger venue right at the end. The soundtrack is just absolutely superb. The film itself is just brilliant. It's it's a real mirror on early 80s Britain. Um, it was a dark, depressing place. Um, unemployment. Uh, it, it wasn't the best of places. I mean, people have fond memories of the 70s but there are very very few people who have apart from the music scene and maybe movies they don't have much um, of uh, a pleasant recollection of what the early 80s were like because it, it was not the nicest of places to be in uh, in Britain and this this movie pretty much shows it exactly for what it was um, I'd highly recommend it if you've not seen it as I say the soundtrack is absolutely superb what I would recommend is if you're going to watch it, try and track this version down. Um, uh, this is what they class as uh, digital, digitally remastered, uncut British version. Now, there's a reason for that. I've been um, waiting for years uh, for a Blu-ray release of this movie because I think it would look absolutely superb in high def. Um, and I found one on Amazon not too long back read a few of the reviews and realized that it was an American um, import and to tell the story very briefly um, yeah, Breaking Glass went over to America when it was first released um, had a few press screenings a few test screenings over there and it turned out the Americans didn't like the ending they thought it was too downbeat um, obviously didn't think uh, that the Americans could cope with an ending as downbeat as this one um, despite movies like Taxi Driver, Midnight Express, <laughs> obviously Breaking Glass was a bit too much for them. Um, so they changed the ending and the Blu-ray version that is available at the moment, uh, beware because it is the American print um, and not to give too much away about the ending, uh, there's a concert at a large venue where she sings Eighth Day, uh, which was a massive chart success back in its day. Um, and after that concert, just after she's literally sang the last note, uh, the frame freezes and the uh, the titles roll up. And that is where the Americans um, wanted it to finish. Um, they didn't want to see her cracking up on the underground. They didn't want to see her in a care home because of exhaustion. It was... It was um, I mean, I've seen that version of it, and it if it, it is just cut so abruptly um, at the end. So, whatever you do, if you're gonna get a version, get this one. I know it's DVD, uh, but it's a decent print. It looks all right. The sounds okay. Um, but if anybody's out there who does sort of uh, Blu-ray releases, this movie, Breaking Glass, is very. It's, it's absolutely crying out for a Blu-ray release, a good one. Um, so I would recommend if it comes out on Blu-ray, I will definitely reinvest in that one without a doubt. Uh, but that is the version to get if you're thinking of watching it. But if you like early 80s films, that is a real time capsule and well worth watching. What have I had through this week? Uh, yes, I have bought a few. <clears throat> Starting with this one, 
the Fast and the Furious. Um, now, Fast 9 came out, I think it was last week. Um, there was a lot of fuss about it, saying how, some people saying how brilliant it was, some people saying how absolutely completely ludicrous it is. Um, I have never seen a Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> Sorry, I've never seen one. Um, so I thought, right, for the sake of three or four pound, I'll have the first one and we'll see how we go. And I have been told that they get uh, more and more ridiculous as the movies go on. But I'm told they're quite enjoyable, so I thought we'll, we'll give that a try. Um, another one I had through that was recommended to me. I, I'm a great lover of French cinema. And this one has escaped me for quite a few years. Um, but one of the ladies at work, Donna, um, mentioned this one. Um, she actually mentioned the actress's name and I said I'd never heard of her. And straight off she said, well, you must have seen Amelie. No. So straight onto Amazon and there we go. Blu-ray copy of that, which I'm really looking forward to getting into. Um, another one recommended by a colleague at work who he's into um like korean horror movies now i've never seen one apart from uh and it's not really korean it's japanese the original version of the ring which i thought was 10 times better than the hollywood remake but this one he tells me is as creepy as hell so uh again onto amazon 89 pence couldn't go wrong so I'm looking forward to having a watch of that one. Thanks for the recommendation on that one, Rob. Um, I'll let you know what I think of that when, uh, when I've watched it. I've seen the trailer and it, it, it does look good. So definitely looking forward to that. Um, I've also been watching this one over the last <clears throat> couple of weeks. Um, I've had this for quite a while, just never got around to, to actually watching it. Um, it was the result of a Kickstarter campaign a few years ago. Um, Basically, they were trying to crowd fund um, money to make uh, a few new Thunderbirds episodes, three. Um, and they were taken from three long playing records that were released in the 60s. They were original adventures, but obviously they were sound only. Um, and what they wanted to do was get the original puppets, the original sets, the original filmmakers, etc. And make these... Um, uh, make these episodes into proper visual things which they've done and I have to admit they have done an absolutely brilliant job I don't know how easy it, it, it is to get hold of this nowadays I believe it's quite rare um, but if you get the chance to have a watch of them highly recommended highly highly recommended they look great they look exactly like old episodes the only difference is they're only 30 minutes long each but to hell with it they're absolutely worth it um, I'll tell you where you will find this. Um, you will find it, uh, I believe they're streaming on BritBox at the moment. So if you, you can't actually get the Blu-ray, if you've got BritBox, you should be able to find them on there. So next week's movie, uh, the one I'm going to be uh, talking about, is this. A beautiful classic that I haven't seen since <laughs> way back when. Um, I remember it vaguely. Uh, I do remember enjoying it, which is why I bought this Blu-ray copy of it. So I'm looking forward to doing... Um, a review of that and obviously writing something up on the website another movie that's coming up within the next few weeks and somebody brought this to my attention today another classic that I'd forgotten about nice one Caroline Capricorn 1 um, I knew I'd got it somewhere so I've dug that out and that's going by the TV set so I'll be watching that at some point and I'll be doing a review of that one over the next few weeks including something on the website and also aha, the Goonies mm. Yeah, I've got to tread very, very carefully with this one. I found that out the last time I talked about this movie. Um, it has such a following. Um, I don't know whether I did a review on the website of it. I can't remember. Uh, I don't think I did. I'd have to have a look. Um, but I have seen it once. It took me 35 years to watch it. I only watched it for the first time last year. Absolutely loved it. Um... It had been recommended to me by a lot of people who, who have basically grown up with it and just absolutely adore it. So I thought it was about time I talked about The Goonies, but I really do have to tread so very carefully with it because it is such a loved movie. Um, but I'm going to be doing, obviously, um, a review on the website and also a video review of that over the next few weeks. Um, and one last thing, launched today, uh, Retro TV Zone. Wow, you you guys have really taken to that one. It's absolutely rammed with posts already. I only launched it about uh, what time? It been about seven o'clock this morning. Um, 
you guys love it so <laughs> well done to all of you uh, you've really embraced this one I've got one more to come possibly two somebody mentioned another one earlier on um, but I'm going to do one in the next few weeks uh, which I'm going to call retro music zone uh, which is basically just what it says just just music from the 70s 80s 90s before that um, that one's coming up over the next few weeks um, but I'm, I'm so chuffed with the way uh, retro tv zone has taken off and that's just on its first day so I'm looking forward to uh, sharing many memories on that with you and, uh, and obviously to reading yours so right I'll leave it there it's pizza night tonight um, as you all know uh, the movie I've got lined up tonight is one called Supernova um, it's not exactly a barrel of laughs from what I've heard uh, it's a very thoughtful quiet um, I don't even know where to start with it um, it's all to do with Alzheimer's um, but I'll, I'll tell you more about that when I've actually watched it um, there was one other film I watched uh, last week actually while I was off called A Field in England which if, you, if you've never seen it I believe it's on film 4 at the moment um, or is it all 4 the, the streaming service anyway uh, it's an early Ben Wheatley movie um, I've got a love-hate relationship with Ben Wheatley movies as you might know I saw Kill List um, a while ago and was absolutely horrified by the, the level of violence in it. Uh, it it caught me completely off guard so I was a little bit reluctant to watch this one but I'd heard so much about it um, plus his new movie In the Earth is released uh, I believe this week or it was released last week and it's it's one that I'm looking forward to watching but again the level of violence in it is supposed to be absolutely horrific so I've, I've got to be in the right mood for that one um, but a field in England, <laughs> it's it's set in the 17th century during the English Civil War and it's set in a field in England. <laughs> that's about all you can say about it. It's a cracking movie. Um, I just didn't really know what to make of it. It's one of those that you watch it and you think, what the hell have I just watched? I think I need to see it again. Um, it's just about four people, uh, two of them soldiers, two of them not. Um, I mean to cut it back to its basics they eat wild mushrooms and engage in various sort of sort of trips that kind of thing there's more to it than that but I, I need to get my head around it before I start talking about it but just the fact that it's a Ben Wheatley film should have put me off but I actually quite enjoyed it um, but I do need to watch it again the visuals are amazing it's filmed in black and white I think it was made in 2013 um but uh, there's another Ben Wheatley film called Rebecca, which is a remake of the Hitchcock um, movie, which I would like to see. Um, I don't think it's going to be his usual uh, fare. Um, and also he's been signed on to direct uh, The Meg 2, which I'm really looking forward to watching. I, I can't wait to see what he does with that. He's already said he's going to push um, the levels uh, of gore to the very limit as far as the censors go so um, I'd have I'd have loved to have read what the BBFC made of kill list um, it, it, I believe it passed uncut amazing <laughs> right I'll leave it at there folks have a great Saturday um, and I will talk to you all again next weekend have a great weekend folks nice one see you soon